Okay, thank you, Lily. <clears throat> now it's recording. I've just talking about it, how we are attached to our story. And the story is just memories. It's not real, it's not a life, except that life that we are wrongly giving it. It's the emotion that we are feeding into it, the life force that we still directing in these incidents that have already passed, that are not more real, but just memories. Feeling remorse, feeling regrets, feeling embarrassed, feeling guilty, or on the other side, feeling very proud, this I did very well. <laughs> Missing the current of life now. It takes away so much of our life energy, of our inner beauty, of our creativity, by being attached to all these stories. And when we start to dive deeper, become mm -hmm. more conscious, then we become more and more aware we have been carrying along much more that we even were aware of. Stuff that was there, but suppressed in the subconscious, and still there is attachment to them. So when we start to become more peaceful, it has the tendency to come up to the surface. Let it come up. Let the emotions, the energies that are locked into it come up. Observe them in the now. Observe what they are doing now and learn to relax and learn to detach. It is just a story. <clears throat> what does it matter whether I did like this or did like that when I was a child? What does it matter when, <laughs> whether I did like this or like that when I was a 20 years old, 30 years old. We can learn our lessons from the memories. We can apply whatever we have learned in the present on the practical level. Nothing wrong. But that the emotional attachment is draining our life force away. And even if we know that, a memory comes and there is guilt that comes along with it, okay? Then let the guilt come. But observe the guilt. Don't feed it. Don't think, oh, it's so bad. Why did I do like this? I shouldn't have done like this. Okay, maybe we did things that were not very glorious. Everybody has. <laughs> we are all in the same boat in that. Our stories are unique and yet similar. Let the embarrassment come. Let the guilt come. Observe also that. Observe that feeling, what it is doing right now, and relax and let it go and let the attachment go, the attachment to the past. The past is just a story. You are. You are alive now. You are alive and consciousness. Conscious now. You are alive and conscious and full of creativity and joyousness and love now. And we have the tendency to totally miss out on that by hanging on to the past. And that also from all the memories in the past, then we project similar stories in the future and start to get attached to those, to those ideas, what could happen, what I could do. Hmm. The future also is just in the mind. <clears throat> we can do our planning in the present, reasonable, and then drop the subject without being emotionally attached to it. That emotional attachment 
is what is draining our life force away and we have to learn to become aware of that and then start to relax and let it go if we want to become aware what the tremendous potential we have here now of course then there is also the influence of energies that we have not produced in the past in the now in the present moment on this three-dimensional level there are so many influences <clears throat> but when we have learned to detach from our own stories it's much easier to see them and learn not to be pushed helplessly as a victim left and right but go our way with strength with courage with beauty not always wondering am i doing right am i doing wrong am i doing right am i doing wrong what are they thinking about when i'm doing like this just let the life that is happening now be a beautiful expression of what comes out of our own inner self and even in this world life becomes beautiful and joyous a playful journey through this time space continuum getting richer for the experience with every moment that's what we are here for to learn to be in touch with reality in the flow consciously alive and then learn to deal with that in such a way that it is not pulling us into negativity and destructivity and in that way we become stronger and stronger and that strength and that wealth that we are accumulating in this way will stay with us all else will go away whatever external stuff we are accumulating in one moment it's gone at the moment we leave this projection this three dimensional time space continuum once we go out all is left behind but that strength that we are accumulating while learning to live conscious in the moment that stays and by conscious living consciously in the moment doesn't necessarily mean i have to be try to be aware of every damn little, little detail that is happening just to be conscious of being conscious just to be conscious of being alive and then we can deal with whatever has to be dealt with easily playfully joyously and then the story is not some heavy weight that we are carrying but it's a very valuable storehouse of information we don't have to try to put a nice color on the past we can very well see okay there i really felt there i really did something silly so what it has happened it's past it made me wiser so let's not be emotionally attached to it but just see it for what it is information that helps us deal with the present all right my friends i stopped talking just by myself and asking you 
Is there anyone who would like to come in and say something? You are welcome. <coughs> Hello, Anna. Hello, Andreas. Um, my, I, f I find it very difficult to drop my story. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it come with my uh, identification with my body and mind? And with sure. that, like the low self-esteem stuff comes and all the concern about my future. Mm. So, so I find it very hard to drop that. In a way that, yeah, I mean, I, I can't drop the identification with my body and my mind mm. so easily. Right, because it's such a strong habit, but it's good to have at least the idea to do so and to remind oneself to do so, but not uh, because of the argument, it's not easy to drop it, then just give it up. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not giving it up. I'm, I'm just find it. Yeah. I find myself so many times. I mean, basically all the time in my own story, and the, the moments are rather rare when I um, are when I'm really present and not so much influenced by my by my. How am I doing this? Do I do I do this? Even if in meditation, I always check if I'm doing this good or bad, and yeah. Yeah, it always interferes. Right, but when you are when you become aware that you are doing it, then okay, let it happen. But in a way, when you are aware, you can just step a little back, a step back, and see the mechanism of oh, I'm doing it again, and see what is happening, and then you are already not more so emotionally totally involved in it, if you observe it. <laughs> Whether you are doing that in meditation or whatever you are doing, when you become aware, oh, there I'm again totally attached to what has happened and it's totally influencing how I'm dealing with the present moment. At that moment, you just somehow take a deep breath, and relax and see that mechanism of doing it again. And in that way, already the attachment starts to get less. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's very difficult. Right, but uh, thinking that it's difficult should not be made into an excuse not to do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like a couple of days ago, I, I bought a used uh, stereo amplifier, a receiver, and yeah. it was kind, kind of, there was something wrong with it, and I was very disappointed, <laughs> and I had a really hard time getting out of that disappointment, even so I know I knew that it was something, I mean, something minor, you know, not very important, but it yeah. brought me down anyway, and yeah, I could see that it's not important that other people have much more important problems and but I still there was something that is in my subconsciousness that was very difficult to let it go and mm. take it easy. Right. And then it doesn't matter whether it's really important or not, whatever we are hooking into and get a bit obsessive about it, then it can become very big and very big. But then at least you are were quite aware that this is happening. It's not that uh, you were not even aware that it is there. And being aware that such a thing happens is uh, not really liking it is not exactly a pleasant experience, but it's already quite a step that you are aware of it and don't approve of it. And then you can just go a step further and, and say, okay, then since this wants to come, since this must come, let that feeling come. And then just take a good moment and say, all right, then let me really feel like this. Let me feel pissed off. Let me feel disappointed. Let me feel angry because of the whole thing. But then detach the attention from what brought those feelings about and just observe the feelings. 
what they are doing to your experience right now and start to relax. And if we deal with it, then slowly that habit gets weaker and loses its power to always influence it so strongly. Don't fight against it. When you feel and then think, oh, I shouldn't feel disappointed, I shouldn't feel angry, <laughs> then uh, that doesn't help much. It's already a step to see it. But then you say, okay, then let, let it be so. Let that feeling be there. Experience it to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And observe how it is affecting your experience, what it is doing to you physically and energetically. And when you are aware of that, you can consciously start to relax. And this relaxing is nothing else but detaching. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sometimes it may look difficult because the habit is so strong, but that idea that it is difficult, we should not nourish that and uh, make it into a barrier. Okay, it's a challenge, but then let's pick up the challenge. <laughs> it, it was very difficult on that day because I was a little sick and felt weak. And yeah. I mean, this makes it easier to go into a negative mood than when something... Right. Yeah. But then, then you come out and then you don't have to let the memory still pull you into a negative mode. Because that is what is happening. Something happens and we are reacting strongly, but then the thing is already gone. And we still hang on to it and perpetuate that same mood. And even if the situation overwhelms us and we completely lose the consciousness we could react differently but then after that eventually when you have that id that intention of being aware you become aware ah oh, there i'm doing it again i'm still hanging on i'm still turning it around and let it pull me into a dark mood there you can start to deal with it differently and if you do that consequently, you catch yourself earlier and earlier, and eventually you may be able in the moment itself, see, ah, uh -uh, there it comes again, the reaction, and relax before it can hook in. <laughs> it was connected to some, I mean, to some other ideas like that I, I really thought, oh, I have to, now I, I'm able to enjoy very good quality of music reproduction mm -hmm. and that was kind of important and the fear of like wasting my money for a broken thing all this came in there and yeah i know that but it still was yeah but i didn't do what you said I, I just i was more in my head than in my feelings yeah well you were mainly aware of what was happening in the head but the two are usually very closely connected. I think the feelings were also there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could notice the feelings, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I couldn't detach from them. Yes, and uh, they are the more powerful part than the thoughts, mm -hmm. the feelings. Yes. So then focus on the feelings and let them come and fully experience them and then learn to relax. <laughs> then they stop being enemies. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank Thank you. 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 <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. Hello. Uh, 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 okay, come Leora. Nelly will come after. <laughs> about um, um, boredom. Yeah. The other day I was uh, sitting on my porch and I, I felt restless, but also I, I, it brought up this uh, question, like maybe like a memory of being bored, bored because I'm not sure that nowadays I can say that 
I'm bored even when I don't have something important to do at, at the certain moment. So I thought maybe boredom is like the, the push and pull, the movement, like when I don't want, when I want something else that is actually happening or not happening now. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if it's connected. I'm not sure. I, I remember this uh, sensation of, um, of boredom, which was, Often, oops, yeah, I haven't heard you for okay. a moment, which was often and then it cut off. It was often connected with loneliness, yeah, yeah, right, or yeah, one of the things I remember very clearly, yeah. So, what can you say about boredom? Boredom is also basically an emotion, of course then uh, immediately we connect it with our thoughts and brood about and uh, uh, think a lot about it, but basically it's an emotion and it's a similar, um, a closely connected emotion with loneliness. You are right. It's a bit more subtle to deal with that then like a gross emotion, like anger, uh, that is very clearly perceptible. Hmm. And boredom hmm. is often also a bit connected with a feeling of lack of energy and, and stuff like that. So it's, we have to be more attentive to really catch it clearly than like a violent emotion, like anger. But still, if we become aware of boredom or related emotions, we still can treat it in the same way. Okay, then instead of trying to analyze and trying to think our way out of it, then just accept that is now my experience, that is now my feeling. And invite it even. Okay, then let me feel really bored consciously. <laughs> and actually, it starts to become interesting. The boredom yeah. goes. If you observe, like a scientist in a laboratory, if you observe your own psychophysical manifestation, how it's reacting to those feelings, it starts to become interesting and you stop being pulled into negativity from it. Okay, it's an emotion. It comes, it manifests like this. And if I'm observing it and not feeding it, it's also going away. But I know that uh, I, I know people who are bored most of the time, but then that boredom is draining their energy away and they feel I cannot do anything. And so you tell them, oh, but uh, do this, do that. Oh, I can, oh, I don't want to. You can do uh, something. And there always comes the, mm, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it can become a total addiction. But uh, if we start to, even if it's a strong habit for somebody who has the strong habit of being bored and then draining the energy away and then have the feeling I cannot do anything, if we start to accept, all right, this is the experience right now. Okay, this is how it really feels. Open up to that feeling, boredom. And observe it and see what it is really doing and then relax, and then the boredom gradually definitely will go away because it becomes interesting because you bring your attention to the present and here now there is no space for boredom. <laughs> it's just that right. bubbling beauty of life. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. 
It doesn't happen to me often um, because if I really look into it, then I can say that maybe I need some movement now, or maybe I just uh, need to change position or um, anything, but it doesn't really bother me any longer as maybe it used to in the past. Mm -hmm. In the past, and also I often sort of train myself to just to, to do nothing because um, um, as I'm aging, I don't feel I need to do so much. But when when it's a bit bother, disturbing, it's when I feel a bit like a lack of motivation. And I don't like this, I don't like that. And like, like slight, um, not depression, but like something. And um, that also does happen very often. But uh, yeah, even, even if it's uh, not happening often now or the boredom, obviously it has happened in the past, and somehow the the traces are still there. And then in such right. a moment that comes up, and then you accept, okay, even if I'm not usually a victim to that now. So for the time being, if there is still some weight hanging on to it in the subconscious because of the past and let it come, let it come up and deal with it now. And then also the rest of that habit that is still there uh, can be just mm. neutralized. Yeah, good. <laughs> and you said you, in the beginning, you said you became restless and you felt it was connected to that whole thing. And then uh, let let that restlessness also be there, and say, okay, yeah. I'm not at peace. I'm not at ease. There is that feeling of restlessness, uh, but accept the feeling and observe the feeling and see what it is doing to your experience and learn to relax. And then also that restlessness passes. Of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, so sometimes there comes this uh, voice of uh, criticism, like, uh, yeah, don't don't look at your phone. You know, I, I have the tendency nowadays to look too much for news about yeah. what's happening and yeah. and Facebook to see who said that and who said that maybe something will uh, cheer me up a little bit or something about this situation. Uh, so then I sort of criticize myself, but then I go to the subject which you spoke about today, about mm. not me, me, me. Yeah. Uh, so there is a reaction, so I do this, so it doesn't matter any longer. I mean, uh, yeah. it's everything is, it's it's okay I, I don't, as long as I don't hurt anyone. So I do this, I do that, it's not perfect, but fine. Right. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> Shall we leave it at that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank Hario. you. Hario. 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 Nelly, would you like to come in now? Yes. There hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Uh, I want to to ask something and share. Yes. Oops. Remember my mother's. Uh, my mother's uh, death and uh, how I came and see her and this is really very um, unusual experience for me and I often remember this how I saw her and uh, uh, I saw Sorry, that just that I understand what you are saying you saw her when she was dying or you saw the, her body after death what are her you body. When, ah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because right. I, when I came, she was already died. Yes, yeah, she was right. on the floor. I saw her body, and uh, I. Um, it was amazing for her, for me, that I um, I took it like not my that this body is not my mother, but this body is like a left house, like yes. empty yes. house that uh, this is a uh, that she left yes. and uh, it really um, it seemed to me that she's 
near me that she's some here near me and i just um i i thought that she's in the uh uh certain corner of the room yeah. looking at me and uh, didn't want me to worry about it it's like i i uh felt i don't know if it is my imagination or it really can be like this but this um, feeling really that this body is not here it, it's very clear for yeah. me it was very yeah. clear and even when we uh, were uh, when we came when when she was in the coffin and we came to her and i touched her and someone cried but i felt it that this is not she this is just empty house yeah uh, yeah and i just wanted to to ask you what do you what do you mean about this my feeling in the room that i it it seemed to me that she was near looking at me i yes. don't know i don't know whether the, your mother was still there but uh, it's most probably exactly as you say that she that being that projection of that being that has been your mother was still around there short after her physical death as you say has left the house <laughs> but was still there in a subtle way and you felt that presence that that can very well be true yeah Mm -hmm. I see. Yes, it's very um, amazing experience for me just to see her body, and I still often uh, remember this. And that I I see it's very strong for me to to realize this that this is really not a, not she. Yes. Yes, it's very strong for me. Very strong. Yes. Okay. And so we can be sure we are not this body. Huh? <laughs> this, body yes. is, this body is the house where we live. Huh? <laughs> yes, really. I, I realized it yeah. in, this, in this experience. Yeah. Yeah. And now when we, uh, my, my daughter and I, we take apart mother's things, uh, pack them to give to some maybe charity uh, to some people and i see how mm, i don't know how it's amazing it is that uh, this being was in this flat and had all these things her clothes her um, dish and everything and once She's not here. It's uh, all of these things. <laughs> yeah. They uh, are just not necessary. And uh, it's so amazing that she, she, she took nothing with her, even now her body. Yeah. Everything is here. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really very amazing for me just to see it with my own eyes like it happens yes that it's all not important and i thought about myself that i don't need to to keep so much things so yes. that my uh, my child do not have to uh, mm. care it, take care of them it stares us in the face all the time everybody knows perfectly well one day we are going to get out of this world. Everybody knows it. And somehow we like to push it away and not to think about it. And then a situation like this can shake us up and say, hey, look, this is a fact. So how important is all that stuff that I'm accumulating? How important is whatever role I'm playing in this? How important is now every little detail how my body looks? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. 
it puts to to become aware to remind oneself or then being reminded by the circumstances as you tell it now that this is all just ephemeral it goes away nothing stays is a very good way of getting healthy proportions healthy attitudes towards this material accumulations the material wealth the material story the whole thing of it yes yes that's right i see <laughs> but sometimes it's not easy to let go <laughs> some things <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> however i don't need so so much yeah mm. you do, that doesn't mean you have now to empty your house and give <laughs> everything away it simply means we can learn to be not attached to it and then it's also easier when you feel something is really doesn't help anything it's just taking away space and it's more of a burden then it's also easier to get rid of it but it's more a, a question of the attitude that okay somehow the story is that i have certain things nothing wrong in it but let my well-being not hang on to it be dependent on it when it's there it's there when it's not there it's not there hmm. yes yes i see uh, and i want to share one 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 more thing yes uh, once in my meditation i i watched my thoughts because i always have them i just already began uh, stopped regret about that <laughs> that i have a lot of thoughts i just but i i see that something uh however they come something stays stays yes. uh yeah stays alert in in me yes. like like one hand i uh, carry to something uh stable and <laughs> from the other side comes a very different things yes. yes something like this and once i um i tried to um, let go these thoughts and it uh, uh, happens like for some for some um, i don't know sometimes i'm um, seconds i don't know how to say i felt that this i give away this as give away i don't need this i don't need this and i felt that what what i have nothing and i felt some emptiness that i am nothing really if i don't if i take away all of these thoughts all of these things and just like something that what am i i am nothing <laughs> <laughs> i i am empty and just like i can be that the best um thing that i can do is just to take away all these things and then i become just li like a channel th through which something beautiful can come so it's not me but i don't know it it is uh, it is like it is here but it's not in me because i am just a channel <laughs> that can uh can uh, let it go through me but it was not for a long time and uh, and then i oh you disappeared to werner yeah um i don't ah yes i now i see you there is somebody oh. come in can you please turn off your microphone i don't know the name it's just galaxy s10 light can you please turn off your microphone you're slightly interfering anyhow nelly you see me now Yes, now I see you. Very good. Yeah. Oh, right. Thank you. <laughs> It's off. <clears throat> yes, and I and I couldn't. Uh, I tried to uh, repeat this <laughs> experience, but it is now. It's not easy, and uh, uh, because I stick to these thoughts and um, difficult to repeat this. right it uh, it has also happened it's not really that you did it that experience it has happened you, what you can do 
what we can do with our practice is make ourselves available that it can happen. <laughs> and then it's not in your hands that uh, an experience like this happens and how long it stays and how often uh, it comes back. But you can make yourself available by being alert, observative and relaxed. Namaste. Okay. Right. Okay. But Thank it's you. nice. It's a good inspiration if you have such experiences. Becoming aware, okay, all this stuff comes and goes and comes and goes, but there is really something that is not coming and going. That simply is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But that emptiness that didn't frighten you. You were not afraid of that emptiness. I'm asking actually, are you, were you afraid? Uh, afraid of emptiness? No, yes, you I, said it was empty. You were no, not I wasn't afraid. It, yeah. it, it, maybe it wasn't so bright experience. It was just, uh, I was free from my thoughts and it was so, um, uh, so <laughs> unusual, <laughs> unusual, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're right. That's, yes, unusual. It, no, I was not afraid. Uh, other, it's beautiful to be empty. It's yes. it's very interesting. Yes, yes. Th that I I really don't want to do something. To not, I just want to. I just need to relax to let go. Yes, and think that <laughs> that I should do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Then <clears throat> that's not that's great because sometimes uh, for some people, then when something like this happens, there comes fear, fear of emptiness. But if it's not a problem, then so much the better. Yes, empty the mind. An empty mind is no mind. <laughs> and then there you are. <laughs> of course, you are. You said, and I was just nothing. But uh, you are. Not nothing, you are simply not a thing, <laughs> but you are nothing and everything. You are empty and you are full, <laughs> but you are not all these waves that come and go where one is hooked with the attention most of the time. So it's great, but uh, don't try too hard to reproduce the experience. Simply be open, be in the moment and relax and sort of inviting it, but not trying to do something particularly to bring it about. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Werner. Very good. Ario. Ario, Ario. If somebody else wants to come in, you're welcome to do so. So uh, Hello. I would like to, yeah, <laughs> hi again. <laughs> I would like to somehow continue what uh, Nelly has just described. Um, I wonder about being the observer, observer, like when there is a space somehow between, um, this is what I experience. I'm not the observer, but I'm not me also. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the, the sensation that somehow I can hold my reactions back have <clears throat> been it, it's been happening for a long time so they don't even become reactions that it's like just the beginning of of this uh, memory uh, opinion um 
of other ingredients and not sure, and then it, it's a reaction. Th this thing usually can happen really fast in yeah. any given situation. Yes. So um, what I feel is, um, is that like I'm able to react from the very moment to any given situation. Sometimes afterwards I would feel, uh, or maybe, or whatever, the, the, there can be some uh, reactions to the situation, like inner reactions, but in my behavior, somehow in my, relationship with the other or with the world around me, there is a hold there. There is a kind of a space. Cases, it wouldn't provoke any conflict yeah. with the other person or, um, or with myself or confusion wouldn't provoke a con confusion. So I feel I'm like also the observer, also the, the me, because I, I'm there somehow. Yeah. Right, you don't have to re, uh, produce an observer. So everything is there, but somehow the... the... Hello? Uh, yeah. Uh, you don't have to produce an observer because if we do that, then it's again a construction in the mind that yeah. there is an observer who is observing thing, but then that's just again uh, another personality that we are creating. So it's more a becoming aware something is simple there and observing anyhow all the time that observation simply happens continuously and if we produce the observer then we have to observe the observer and then if we produce an observer who is observing the observer we have to again observe the observer of the observer <laughs> then it's becoming as heavy yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's just if we become quite right, then you are not the observer. You just uh, see things coming in the mind, going, but you are not going along with it. And you see there is something is observing that happening. That observing is, sim is simply happening because an aspect of you is never moving, is motionless, is quiet is at ease, at peace, and from there, all this is being seen, that is happening. All the movement, the pleasant things, the crazy things, everything comes, goes, but that one is not affected. It's not an observer. It's what you are. It's a, the first expression of what you are, the purity of consciousness and life, and from there, everything is simply being observed without creating an observer. So that's our nature, that's pure nature. nature. It's the first expression of it. But the, what you are, there is absolutely nothing to say about it. It's prior to anything that we could even imagine. But that pure consciousness, that pure life, that pure love, that pure existence is that first primordial expression of what you are and everything comes after that everything comes out of that and what we can is bring the attention in that direction and become come to that purity to that pure expression pure consciousness pure love pure energy that's all we can do and what you really are is is right behind that. <laughs> it's a way yeah. of talking. Of course, it's not behind anything. 
beautiful. <laughs> Shall we leave it there? At that? Okay. Hario. 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 I see one camera is on. Yes. Ah, hello, hello Malu. Hello. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, in France, back oh, in Europe. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, something that sticked so much with me was this. We oh. talked so much about being natural and coming back to our naturalness. And I realized that even on my spiritual path, I tried so much to do something, to be someone, yes. to be, to fit in the box of being a yogi and being a meditator. And um, so it's really something um, I feel that is so important for me to stop trying to do things and to fit into something. But now I can see, especially in meditation, for me, it's a very fine line between not trying to do something, but then also there's a little sense of laziness coming up, I feel, yeah. from the mind, of, oh, I can just sit there and, and being, and I don't have to do anything. Yes. Right. Not do anything doesn't mean to become lazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's uh, very good that you see that distinction. The one thing that that you see was actually there, and most probably you needed that. It was an inspi inspiration that you hold on to that image. I have to be a yogi. I have to be a meditator. That inspired you to go on. But then, uh, what helps at a certain moment? Uh, it, at a certain time, it becomes, uh, it's time that we let it go because then it becomes rather a hindrance. But then letting it go exactly there, we have to be careful that we are not doing the opposite and becoming lazy. By all means, continue your practice, continue your meditation without having that image, I'm a yogi, I'm a meditator, I'm, I have to be somebody simply mm -hmm. because you have done it all the time and it's a very efficient means to become aware in the present but you can become more relaxed about it without thinking i have to do this and to do that in order to achieve something just mm -hmm. as a help to be in the present to be alert now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel, especially when I'm sitting in meditation, and if, for example, we use techniques to calm the mind, to become present, yeah, there very fast for me also comes the sense of I need to push myself to with these mm. techniques, and right. and but then when I when I just sit without doing anything, then I feel there is a bit of this laziness going. It depends whether you then in that uh, not doing anything, just start to daydream away. Mm -hmm. And then you can say it, a little bit of laziness comes in. But when you catch yourself doing that, then bring yourself, find a way to remain alert without having that idea I have to push through something. You know, mm -hmm. I know perfectly well what you are talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I have been pushing and pushing and pushing, <laughs> hoping that somehow I uh, periodically getting so desperate and impatient, thinking that uh, if I'm just pushing an alpha, somehow I'll break through. <laughs> but most of the time, it just started to make me more restless eventually, <laughs> give me a headache. <laughs> That is some very subtle thing to learn to be sincere without having that idea that I can really do something. I cannot do something to get closer, but I can do a lot to 
feel more estranged. I can do a lot to create barriers. And that is the job to become aware where we are doing the opposite. Hey, hey, don't be so noisy here. Huh? <laughs> he looks at me very provocative. <laughs> don't get me. <laughs> It's very subtle, something one has to figure out for oneself how to go about it. But at a certain point, we become aware. I've been doing so much and thinking I'm getting somewhere, but actually what I'm trying to get at is not something that I can do. But we are having the habit of doing so much to disturb it, to create barriers. and there we can do something about it. We can see how we are creating tensions and learn to relax. This is not uh, doing something to break through something uh, because we don't have to. That what we are looking for is already here. Mm -hmm. It's good that you see that uh, sometimes people think, okay, then let me stop doing anything, they stop practicing, and, but the mind is still going on and on, and then it's just a time spent not very intensely, and it's better to keep that alertness. So you can very well relax that, that drive to get somewhere, and more just be and be relaxed and be natural, fine. And then when you catch yourself, but uh, anyhow in that being relaxed and the present and natural, I have the tendency then to just float a bit in a, in a certain state of relative well-being, but dream away, then you can again use whatever techniques you have used and bring your attention back and just be and be alert and be quiet without floating off. <laughs> and then you are not lazy, even if you don't do anything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Wish you well. I think my, I don't know whether. No. <laughs> Repeatedly, the computer told me my internet connection is not good, and I thought maybe it's really the physical connection, but the physical connection is fine. So I hope it can continue without trouble. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You are welcome. But we just talked about with Malu. It's a very important point because there is a lot of this very modern type of Advaita teaching going on. And basically saying you are already dead. Don't do anything. All the doing is just strengthening the ego instead of helping it's disturbing and then people say okay i am that i'm not doing anything not being aware how the mind still can continue with the same mechanisms all the time creating the same pains creating the same sufferings creating the same obstacles. We can do something about that. As long as we are unconsciously doing a lot to create obstacles, we can consciously do something about that. We can at least remind ourselves to be aware, to observe. 
and in that awareness we become aware how this mechanism function and we can learn to let them go it's not really to attain something that is something in the beginning every seeker every practitioner has more or less that idea okay i'm picking up the practice i'm doing something and eventually it will get me somewhere i will get something out of that practice and then it's not so easy to become aware and accept that actually the practice is not to reach something it's not that through the practice at the end of a long journey we reach a goal that goal we want to reach is here is now is that which makes this present experience possible and we don't have to do anything we cannot do anything about that because you are that all along without that there is no experience without that there is no story without that there is nothing <laughs> and there it becomes a very subtle balance one has to find when one becomes aware okay my practice my pushing is not to get me somewhere but to become more alert and then each one has to find for themselves that subtle balance of letting go a bit drive getting somewhere at the same time not becoming dull because of that and think okay there is nothing to gain there is nothing to be reached it's already here and then just sort of get in a mental daze because of that as long as the old mechanisms catch the attention all the time and get us fixed on the mental level where we are creating tension where we are unnecessarily creating suffering then it makes totally sense to do something about it and regular practice helps but we can become more playful with the practice we can become more aware okay it's not to reach something it's not to be somebody because of the practice it's simply that practice helps me to keep that alertness to see where i'm creating that estrangement from being natural and then seeing that we become more capable of letting it go of relaxing of becoming natural <laughs> <clears throat> Kristen, did you want to come in? Somehow you appeared here without uh, with the microphone on. Maybe this was not oh. intentionally. <laughs> no, no, the phone fell, and I think while picking it up, I was sliding uh, the screen. Oh, I see. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> you i see oh andreas you like to come in again you are welcome yes, please do you have any hints how to stay i mean i meant sometimes i manage to be present yeah for a bit of a second but i yeah. never stay there so yeah already the old my ego comes in and says oh this is very good like the sports reporter or yeah right, right. or i start to notice that oh my leg hurts and mm. it's, it's like my ego is like pulling me back or i just can't stay there any yes. hints for that then you use whatever you using to get there you use the same like the somebody who does inquiry simply can inquire but who starts now to think about it and it gives again the direction of bringing the attention to that which is prior to those thoughts if you are doing more by consciously breathing then 
you just redirect when you catch yourself that that mind starts again analyzing and uh, uh, describing the, the experience. You just withdraw the interest. It goes on and on and on because we get interested in it. Then you withdraw the interest and bring it again, again back to simply, consciously, breathe in, breathe out, relax. <laughs> you cannot by force of will stay with that. But you can catch yourself when it's already going off again and then use whatever is most familiar to you. Use that to just turn the attention again in the right direction and relax. And then how much is manifesting? That is what you cannot do. How long it stays, that's again also what you cannot do <laughs> with force of will or something. But uh, you can become subtler and subtler aware when the attention is wandering off and just to redirect it in the right direction. It, it has, for me, it has like two aspects. The one is that I'm, when I focus my att attention in front of me and have the eyes a little bit open, I, my breathing deepens and it, I'm, I feel I'm very present in the moment. And then when I, at the end of the, or when I close my eyes, it's like, um, my my head is opening up in a way or there's a light in my head it becomes brighter so yeah. i don't know which one of the two is <laughs> is always the better one so i always switch in in between like the the focusing on the present in with half open eyes or closing the eyes and being a little bit spaced out i would call it <laughs> And you know, don't quite know which one is the more useful experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, both experiences can be inspiring. Our experiences that come, that go. So, whatever feels to you that is more natural, you can open up to that rather whether it's one or the other <laughs> and then even with the experience let's say the experience of light and uh, like the head is opening up and getting more expensive you still keep the alertness alertness that the alertness to that source that makes that experience possible Yeah, it's harder to, to keep alert with the, the light because when I do that, I, I very quickly drift off because I, I cannot stay there in a way mm -hmm. or not too, too long. And then very, very quickly thoughts come. And I usually without remarking it, I, I follow the thoughts. Yes. And, and then the, if I open the eyes a little bit, it brings me more back to the moment and to the present present i would say right then uh, then you do just that when when you feel that you're drifting away and it helps you just open the eyes again <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's there's still the, this like i'm still doing this you know you know what i mean it's like yes. i cannot but, yeah i, I know but, that not, not doing is not doing anything is very difficult Right, but then uh, don't get hooked on, up on that, oh, but this is still a doing. Your thinking is also a doing. Your drifting away is also a doing. So then you can very well neutralize that, what you are doing there without wanting it and not quite consciously with a conscious act and then relax. There is nothing wrong. That uh, That is part of this this teaching that is misunderstood with that not doing, that doesn't mean that you should do nothing. Because as long as we are doing these things like drifting away, we are doing something. And then there is absolutely nothing wrong. Consciously do something about that. Bring the attention back. Even if that is a doing, and here, now, you can relax again. 
So in this, there is a certain amount of will force in that, the, the bringing back and the centering. Uh, to learn to do that, uh, we, we need more will, but then it, more and more it becomes just consciously redirecting the attention and let go, then an act of will. Because this seems, I mean, it's hard to describe, but it, it seems very easy in a way to, to do this with a, some kind of, I'm here now and I'll just redirect and breathe out, which, as a very simple thing whereas before i always thought oh i need to have very subtle concentration and very fine um feel feeling to really do this and this right now this doesn't this this fineness doesn't seem to be necessary anymore in the way that it is it's happening by itself when right. when i'm there right then stay with that simple thing I don't uh, think because it's simple, it's not good. The simplest things are the best ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank so you again. Should, yeah, you're welcome. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to talk? You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Hello, there you are, Kristen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I have, uh, I would say, uh, same challenge as Andreas, just in a kind of opposite way, because what happens to me when I'm in a very quiet place, often I get this kind of contrast experience that pulls me out. Like, for example, this morning, um, I was lying and meditating in my bed after I woke up. And I was in a very peaceful space and then suddenly out of nothing appears like the silhouette of a Ku Klux Klan hood, ah, just in black <laughs> on the white background. And, you know, it's very hard for me just to stay with what makes the experience possible because I, my mind starts, you know. What is this? Am I, am I supposed to heal this? Should I send love? <laughs> So it's like, and, and also another, uh, another day, I was also in this very peaceful space. And then suddenly I had like a movie of, uh, from S uh, Second World War time where I saw a group of women being pushed into a wagon. Yeah. And um, it just like, it appears out of nothing. Right. And I just wondered if you could comment on it. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> if at that moment, along with whatever you are seeing comes a very clear and strong impression, a feeling that somehow it means something to you. And uh, like you said, should I send love? If mm -hmm. that comes clearly true, then by all means do that. Mm -hmm. And then it means something. But if that, don't, if that doesn't happen, don't start to search for it and brood about mm. it and think maybe it means something and I'm not getting the lesson and maybe mm. I'm missing <laughs> something. No, then because such death just can happen out of the blue, come and go and doesn't really mean anything. Mm. So uh, if not very clearly that comes, okay, there is a, a picture of some distress and it, I'm asked to connect and somehow send love then by all means then that is true but mm. but only if that comes unquestionably otherwise yeah. don't don't look for a meaning in this mm. yeah. so if it comes like a strong kind of intuition yes intuition immediately right but not if it's after the mind is starting right analyzing yeah right mm. i got it right because yeah. in the mind we get then we can imagine any kind of nonsense. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And it's much better than uh, to just come back to that quietness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. Ario. Ario. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello, and Vikas. Hello. How are you? Quite fine. <laughs> I I went through your history uh, last time. Yes. As you had suggested. So I keep wondering what you were doing in that cave for ten years. <laughs> well, as good as I could, I did nothing. <laughs> no, but the. Uh, there were different. The, the first time I was in the cave without coming out, I was still in that, in that experience that me, I'm a sadak trying to get somewhere. And so, first it was still as it had been for years before, mainly uh, trying to do self inquiry with a little yoga at the side, with a little mantra at the side, but doing mainly self-inquiry. And at a certain point, this shifted a bit that the yogic aspect became more predominant, that instead of just focusing on consciousness, I started to focus on prana. And to become more aware of prana, I started to work with the breath. And at that time, I still had that feeling like uh, Marlowe described that I had the feeling I have to push through something. So I built up a whole program of breathing exercises. And, but the, actually, the point was through being aware of the breath, I became more aware of the prana, of the energy, which is equally subtle like consciousness. And then... <clears throat> But it was still a slight struggle because I felt that I want to get somewhere. I want to reach something. And at the end of that period, after quite a very difficult period of struggling even more, things quietened down and then the whole attitude shifted of not more being there and running, trying to get somewhere, but learning to just be here now, for everything is already here. Then I left the cave, went to Tiro and Namalai for two and a half years, but then after that I returned. And when I was again in the cave with coming, without coming out, the attitude was very much different. There was not more that drive of trying to get somewhere, so it, uh, but it just had become natural for me to sit. I've been doing that for years before, even before the cave was there. And then it was just my way of intensifying that experience of being in the present. So the second time I also did for some time quite some strong briefing exercises, but it was more and more just uh, being in the present and intensifying that that the awareness of being aware, that the awareness of being here now. <laughs> Why do I feel so much of compassion when I talk to you? So much compassion? Yes. Or what? Because uh, when you stop creating tensions in yourself, then you don't have to have the feeling that you have to do uh, to be compassionate. Then, because when you stop creating that wall around yourself, then you are aware that you are anyhow connected with everything. And then, what people call compassion is something that naturally is simply there. It's not something that you have to do. <laughs> If you feel connected with life, then you are automatically feeling connected with whoever, whoever you are talking to. And there, that sense of connectedness is being perceived as compassion. Thank you, Werner. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, compassion is quite a tricky subject. 
because we are told to be compassionate by the traditions, basically every tradition has it somehow or other in it. That's a virtue we have to develop. But then it can be grossly misunderstood. And people sometimes think that uh, if I see somebody suffering, then my way of being compassionate is to, to open up and then more and more they also start to suffer and have the feeling this is compassion. But actually all that it is doing is adding more suffering. It's good to be open up, to consciously not just make a wall. Sometimes a, a seeker may have to withdraw and be a bit focused only on oneself without creating the subtle wall that the, I, I don't care about the whole rest of the universe. One can do a lot of good things in the world, thinking that's how I'm developing compassion. But it's also very tricky. We can become a, a sort of a professional good doer. But as long as we are full of tension, as long as we are still feeling that sense of separation strongly along with the good things we are doing, we are invariably also distributing our tensions. That stuff that is not very good and it's like the two, they are a bit neutralizing themselves out. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing good things, but it's not compassion. And seeing somebody suffering and starting to suffer in spite of that is also not compassion. It's pity that invariably turns into self-pity. Poor me that has to see all these bad things. Compassion is something that starts to raise, rise spontaneously, naturally, when we stop to create that sense of separation. We don't have to somehow find a trick to develop compassion. If we feel connected with life, if we feel connected with living beings, then we don't even have this, the idea of being compassionate. It's simply natural to feel the pain of living beings without being pulled into pain oneself, being aware there is something that is, that is not affected, that gives us the capacity to be detached from pain, be it so-called our own or the pain of others. But if we feel connected, then we see that pain. And actually, if we see living beings' pain, at the same time still are capable of centering in that awareness that all in ourselves is already there, the joyousness of existence, is not affected, then we don't get sucked into pain by seeing pain, but actually something very beautiful flows automatically to that being, to that living being that we see where there is pain. And that after that, people may say it, uh, it looks very compassionate. But it's not something that uh, one has to artificially develop if we don't stand in the way, it's simply there. And then you don't have the feeling that you are specially compassionate. <laughs> it's just normal, it's natural. <laughs> All right, let us stop the satsang with that for today. I wish everybody well. Hario. Are you?
हरिओम